Hey folks, it's your favorite podcast family, the Live All Good Podcast, and this is a new episode of the Spotlight Series. In this episode, we talk to Jose Escobar, owner of Escobar Enterprises. Folks, you gotta tune in. This is this guy is a mover, he's a shaker, he is a leader. You're gonna want to hear this episode. Everything about Jose Escobar and Escobar Enterprises is coming up next. Hey folks, this is Lee Grigsby here, health and life coach and founder of Live All Good Coaching. I'll be on the air with Podcast Business News Network talking about the various things around health and wellness and mental health. Also talking about how mindset is critical to achieving the goals that you set for yourself. You can reach me at liveallgood, the number 44, at gmail.com. Or you can go to my website, liveallgood.com, and fill out the contact form and reach me there. Once again, that's liveallgood.com. Go to the About section, fill out the contact form, or you can reach me at liveallgood, the number 44, at gmail.com. Hey folks, welcome back from that short break. As you heard in the intro, on this episode of Spotlight Series, we are talking to Jose Escobar of Escobar Enterprises. Without further ado, let's hear who he is. Jose, how are you, man? Fantastic. How are you, sir? I'm good. I'm good. It is an honor and a pleasure to have you on our Spotlight Series. Um, of course, I know a little bit about you because we were in a mastermind group together. We can touch on that in a little bit, but for our listeners, man, um, let's just, let's get your background. You know, what, before we talk about what brought you to being an entrepreneur, what was your background before that? So before being an entrepreneur, uh, for sure, I was in the corporate world for some time in terms of like, you know, big, large companies. I worked for uh, Liberty Mutual Insurance. Mm -hmm. I worked for State Farm. I was a, an insurance broker. Basically, I was selling um, uh, property and casualty. I mm -hmm. was selling life insurance, health insurance. Uh, prior to that, I was in banking. So mm -hmm. I was a, a bank manager for PNC Bank. And then I was also uh, working for Capital One at the time that eventually was taken over by, I'm sorry, I was working for Chevy Chase Bank that was taken over by Capital One. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of, uh, I was in banking originally, and then I kind of uh, moved the cheese to insurance. Mm -hmm. And uh, and then I was doing life insurance primarily for about a decade. And then I kind of got into uh, entrepreneurship. Okay. Well, you know, that, that's kind of interesting as an entrepreneur myself um, with the Live All Good Coaching. I wasn't, I can't say that I was really in the corporate world. I mean, I've, you know, held, uh, professional television job for a little bit but can, I, i'm interested man what was the if there was a turning point or if there was uh an epiphany some kind of of you know moment of clarity if you will what made you want to make the jump from uh corporate america and working for the the companies and begin escobar enterprises so the vision for me has always been there. I've always aspired to be an entrepreneur. I, I thought I was always an entrepreneur working in the in the typical, you know, corporate world mm -hmm. uh, in, in corporate America, I guess you could say. But I always knew that I wanted to break out and do my own thing. I grew up in a household where the American dream was a real thing. You know, my parents came to this country. Uh, my, my nationality background is Guatemalan. So like Central America. Uh, okay. I, I was born in D.C., but mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. my two older brothers were born in Guatemala and, and myself and my younger brother were born here. And in, in, uh, I was in D.C. He was Baltimore. 
Gotcha. And, but my parents, you know, came to this country at like, you know, 20 years old and like 17 years old, something like that. And um, okay. years ago, and they came not speaking any English um, and not having any leg up with, with little to no money in their pockets. And they basically sure. found a way to rise from that. Um, having all kinds of, my dad was like working three jobs. I, I barely saw him for a few years as a little kid. Um, mm -hmm. He was working so hard and he just came to sleep for like four hours and would leave again and was gone pretty much doing three jobs again. Uh, oh, wow. The restaurant uh, business uh, from, yeah. the, from the bus boy to the dishwasher to like working his way up to eventually owning restaurants, you know? And, nice. um, and my mother, nice. my mother was cleaning like four houses a day. Mm -hmm. And um, that was kind of what she was doing up until she she ran into some lady uh, who got her recruited into a multi-level marketing business called Jaffa Cosmetics. Mm. And uh, very similar to Mary Kate, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that continued to to expand and grow. And before you knew it, as you know, fast forwarding that whole story, um, I saw their challenges and their hurdles and everything they went through and the blood, sweat and tears to yeah. the point where they ended up, uh, I didn't see my mom have a job since she was, uh, since I was like, I don't know, eight years old or something like that, because she had this viable business that was expanding and growing all around the country and, uh, you know, got a heavy six figure income and they ended up with a million dollar home, um, in, and pretty much lived the American dream, you know, man, that, uh, that that's amazing. I, I love, <laughs> so really entrepreneurship, uh, has been in your blood you know that's what you saw they modeled that right. um yeah quick question are they looking to have another kid because i wouldn't mind uh <laughs> <laughs> I, I wouldn't mind being uh you know maybe may, if i can't be your brother maybe uh you know cousin, and i don't know it's, no no they they um they i mean they're not you know millionaires <laughs> or anything they just they sure, they're sure. Higher, higher now and Absolutely. You know, mom is um, living off a of residual income, you know, from her business, that's, uh, which that's is nice. amazing. And my dad is retired. He doesn't he's left the restaurant industry and kind of they're just kind of doing their own thing quietly now. But I saw that model as my point. I saw the model growing up. I saw the the entrepreneurial spirit and the fight and what it's what it is, you know. So I knew that that was the path I wanted to take. And uh, I think what led to one day me actually taking action on that, you know, vision, yeah. and dream was yeah. just um you know, my, my, my family, you know, once I had a family and I was like, you know what, now's the time to step it up. Mm. Okay. So like I said, I mean, and I love, I love hearing that again, it was modeled for you, right? Like you literally saw that and then being able to apply that once you had your own family, you know, right. um, <clears throat> excuse me, a lot of some of my either uh, coaching friends or other entrepreneurs that I know a lot of times, what we do is we become entrepreneurs because we are trying to reclaim our time. And so, you know, with that being said, is that part of the reason that you're mentioning once you had a family, it's not just about working for yourself and, and modeling what your parents modeled for you, but would you, is it fair to say that you wanted to reclaim some of your time to spend with your family? For sure. I think financial independence comes when, when you work for yourself, because at the end of the day, um, if, if you don't own the company, it's not your dream. Mm -hmm. You know, That's the way I see it. Like if, if you don't own the company, you're working for somebody else's dream. And yes, sure. to the extent you can build your dream too, but mm -hmm. we always need to realize we're not thinking big enough. Right. So, um, right. so I know that, you know, there's a great book called the magic of thinking big, and I don't care how big you think you're thinking, you're not thinking big enough. And mm. I'm like, you know what? Like, like I want <laughs> that. I want that second to none lifestyle. I want to be uh, living on my terms, rolling over instead of rolling out. You know, living life. Right. If I want to get a raise, I look in a mirror and say, "What am I going to do today to make that happen?" You know, not like, "Can I go to lunch?" You know, "Can I get a raise?" Is it my do? Is it my turn to get a raise? I think this. Or is I only have thirty minutes for lunch. <laughs> yeah, like, I don't want to do that. Like, I want to be able to go yeah. where I want to go, travel the world, live. Um, you know, financially independent with time freedom and money freedom. And ultimately, I think the bottom line is just making sure that. Um, so what I realized is that there's a there's a contradiction, like something like there's a problem in terms of the goals, like the, the employer, okay. the employer is um, trying to pay you the least amount of money for the most amount of effort and work. 
Mm. Uh, employee typically is trying to work the least amount of work for the most amount of money. <laughs> they never see eye to eye, you know? So like something in that model, something has to give, right? <laughs> yeah. That's what it's all about. So I just want to be able to do uh, live life on my terms and, and make sure I leave a legacy and make sure I live a good example to my kids to show what hard work is all about and that whatever you want in life, you can achieve. Man. I love that. I just, I want, I want our listeners to like really, really dial into that takeaway, right? With what you just said, hard work ends up yielding the life that you want, right? You really get to have the things that you're looking for, but I guess you need to have clarity, right? What does that look like for you? What is it, uh, you know, what does it smell like? What does it feel like? If, if you didn't have the model that you had, what is one thing that you could tell someone like, you know, I'm sure you, uh, you know, you connect with people all the time and there are plenty of people that, will say, you know what? No, I don't have the time for that. Or no one's going to believe me. No one's going to buy into my idea. What is, what is something that helped you overcome that? And what could you, what could you say to somebody who, who says that to you? So first of all, um, nobody's going to believe in you until you believe in you. Mm -hmm. So like, Okay. Yes, yes, it matters what other people think and what other people say, but that's the small stuff. And mm -hmm. the way I see it is there's a great book called Don't Sweat the Small Stuff. It's all small stuff, mm -hmm. you know, and and as far as the value that I have and the value that I bring and what I'm capable of is completely intrinsic. It's completely up to me. Like we extrinsically tend to look for things and validation and mm -hmm people supporting us and encouraging us and how come they don't support me? How come they're saying this about me? How come they're not backing me up and doing this? Or I just mm -hmm. wrote a book and they're not buying my book. What's wrong with them? I thought we we're friends, you know, or, <laughs> Hey, you know, I right. want to start this, uh, this business and I want to, you know, get you involved and you're, you're not giving me the time of day. Like at the end of the day, like, you know, you just got to roll your sleeves up. You got to like, you know, put the bootstraps on and just, and just get to work. And mm -hmm. look at the end of your own arm and don't expect anything from anyone. Like at the end of the day, if I want something, I need to go out and get it. And it's not that that's not dependent upon what others think about me, whether exactly. they support me or not. Like it would be nice, but I don't need it, to be honest. Uh, man, and I'm, I'm with you on that 100 percent. Right. It, um, even though like you did mention that, you know, it matters a little bit what others think. I would venture to say there's a small circle of people who their opinion matters, right? Right. And it's not about their opinion on the business that I do. It really is the opinion of how I'm, how I fit into their lives, right? How I'm impacting. So I'm more specifically speaking of my wife, my daughter, right? Just like you're talking about your family. Right. Um, man, I, I love hearing that passion, that determination. It really is a choice. You know, so often I think in in this society, sometimes you hit the nail on the head. You talked about the extrinsic things. We look for validation or we look for someone else to believe in us. We look for uh, support. While those things are good, while those things are definitely beneficial, if you don't believe in yourself 100%, then it, it's already... You've already disempowered yourself. Is that, would you agree with that? You know, a hundred percent. Like that's basically acknowledging defeat before the battle mm -hmm. and, and you can't afford to do that. Absolutely. Absolutely. Man, that's awesome, man. Like I, I love the, I love how it came about. You know, I, I at first I thought you were going to say like, man, you know, corporate America got to me. I was stressed out. I was like 600 pounds and I couldn't, I'm kidding. Uh, he's <laughs> never been 600 pounds, folks. I don't think. <laughs> never been 600. But, um, you know, because again, I do have friends that have been in corporate America. Yeah. And a lot of times, again, what we think, at least you're not, you're born here, but your folks weren't. So a lot of times those of us who have been here for more than one generation, right? You, that American dream is, okay, you go to school, then you go to college. And after college, you get that good job. And I'm using air quotes here for good. And that normally uh, equates to corporate job, right? right. High paying job. 
man, if your high paying corporate job is causing you to have a two, three hour commute, if it's causing you health issues, if it's causing stress that is that you should not be under, man, maybe reevaluate if that's not the right dream for you. Is that, right. that, what, what would you what would you say to that? Um, yeah, I mean, so I guess nice. So let's just put an example of an orthopedic surgeon, right? Uh, mm-hmm. Driving the nice car, you know, has a huge, beautiful home, living the life in terms of uh, the material things, right? Sure. And, and sure. yes, of course, having value and impacting lives in a good way and doing a good thing. But at the end of the day, mm-hmm. if you don't get to enjoy like what you work for and including your family, then is it worth it? You know, is that worth it? So yes, yeah. I think money is important because money is typically a means to an end. We need money yes. to live. We need money to enjoy. Um, and it's, it's not a vehicle about, for impact. Yeah, yes. exactly. And I believe there's a difference between making an impact um, that, that, you know, actually gives you a lot of money and then you mm-hmm. just make a lot of money with no impact. That's kind of empty. So yeah, I prefer to make money and make impact, you know, simultaneously because I think they're connected. But that's, I mean, yeah, I think it matters, but uh, it's just a matter of making sure that what you're doing, you're passionate about. Like, for example, my day job right now, um, mm-hmm. I, I have a job, a nine to five right now, and I'm an entrepreneur. I do both. And I mm-hmm. choose right now my day job. I, I do it because I, I, well, of course, the money, but I, I love what I do. I'm a, a sales director for a global martial arts company. Uh, it's mm-hmm. called EFC, Educational Funding Company. It was founded in 19, uh, I think, uh, 57 or something. It's like 54 years old. Oh, wow. You nice. know, and it's been around for a long time. And we're like the Swiss Army knife of the martial arts world. We can pretty much do <laughs> anything anything to, to service your martial arts business. And I get to travel around the, the country. I get to go to events and, you know, the fantastic. martial arts super show in Vegas. I meet all these celebrities. I mean, I've, I've met like UFC fighters and. Boss well, you Gary you Bain. know I'm gonna you know I'm gonna ask you if you've met someone the close personal friend of mine, um, Chuck Norris. Well, okay, yeah, so he was he was actually personal. go ahead. <laughs> he he's not really a close personal friend of mine, but <laughs> I, I I'm sure you've had the chance to probably meet him. Is no, so yes and no, uh, in the oh, sense okay. that um, so Chuck Norris had, was a, a keynote speaker at one of our summits way before I was even around for the company. Ah, um, so yes, that was there, and he has been around our company many years ago. But then I gotcha. actually was in the same event as him in in Las Vegas, the Maya Super Show, and mm-hmm. uh, and he was there. And in passing, I saw him, and we were you know we were at the same event, and I was a uh, you know. Uh, a vendor cool. there and all that, but I actually did not get to physically walk up to the guy, uh, which <laughs> sucks. But yeah, but... I I should have kept that story then that he was a close personal friend of mine because then you could not have uh, couldn't have busted me, you know. Right, right. <laughs> no, man. Um, you know what? <clears throat> Excuse me. So before we take a break, um, you actually teased a few things that uh, is gonna we're gonna touch on in the next segment. But you touched on two books, which are good reads, by the way, folks. Yeah. Um, and and I love the, I don't even know if that was intentional because I think that's just what you do, right? You are a wealth of knowledge and you talk about your experiences. But folks, when we come back from the break, we're going to touch on what uh, Jose is up to now and in, in the things that he's working on with uh, uh, underneath Escobar Enterprises and the entrepreneurs. Um, I, oh, almost gave it away. Ooh, did not want to do that. <laughs> we're gonna we're gonna come back from the break and talk about what what Jose is doing now. So stay tuned. We'll be right back. <laughs> life coach and founder of live all good coaching i'll be on the air with podcast business news network talking about the various things around health and wellness and mental health also talking about how mindset is critical to achieving the goals that you set for yourself you can reach me at live all good the number 44 at gmail.com 
or you can go to my website, liveallgood.com, and fill out the contact form and reach me there. Once again, that's liveallgood.com. Go to the About section, fill out the contact form, or you can reach me at liveallgood, the number 44, at gmail.com. All right, folks, we are back from the break. Uh, hope you enjoyed that first segment, man, because we are here in this spotlight series with Jose Escobar. Gave us a great first segment. We, we heard about his background, heard about his journey from corporate America to being an entrepreneur. And if you didn't catch it, folks, there was a teaser. All right. Um, again, uh, Jose and I connected through a mastermind group. So I know some of these things, but I'm glad that you all get to hear it now. So, Jose, what you mentioned in the first segment, you talked uh, about two books, right? During our conversation, you referenced them. Can you tell us, um, I'm, I'm guessing, and I'm really tossing this up for the listeners, that you love to read. Is that fair to say? 100% yes. <laughs> That was an easy one, folks. Uh, I already knew that. So based on that, based on your love of reading, based on uh, learning and getting information and connecting, can you let us know what you are doing now? What are you working on now? So there's a couple of things. Uh, right now, I have a morning and evening routine mastery program. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's a program that's um, it's more of a high ticket item. It's a few grand to participate in that program. But mm -hmm. it is uh, specifically for entrepreneurs, for, you know, busy professionals uh, that are looking to basically take their lives professionally and personally to the next level. So okay. if, and my, I guess my slogan for that is I help busy professionals improve their mindset, their health and their productivity in 60 days by customizing a morning and evening routine. So that's that's kind of what I say. And uh, mm -hmm. what I do is I teach people the bookends of their day on how to start their day, how to end their day. There's an eight week, uh, you know, whole period that you go through with like two mm -hmm. live coaching calls, group coaching calls, individual calls, 36 plus modules that speaks to all the moving parts of what the high performers do in their mornings, in their evenings, to essentially move the needle and get to that next phase. So that's my my one leg of my company, The Entrepreneur's Bookshelf, which I'm, I'm scaling massively. And there's a backstory to that as how I even got into that. Um, sure. That's, uh, that's the first piece of The Entrepreneur's Bookshelf. And the other leg that I'm super thrilled about that's uh, launching actually tomorrow. And, uh, mm -hmm. you know, I don't know when this is going to launch this podcast, but uh, tomorrow is my birthday, which is January 25th. So, nice. yeah, so you're so, launching uh, the, the second leg of the entrepreneur's bookshelf on your birthday, January 25th. Right. And people yeah. ask me, why did you do that? I was like, well, no reason other than I thought it was cool, you know. <laughs> <laughs> so, so I said, you know what? I might as well just launch my birthday. So so right. we're launching tomorrow. I why not? <laughs> yeah. And, and what that is, it, the second leg to my business is the membership piece because mm -hmm. the morning and evening routine program is a one-off, you know, program. Sure. You, know, you do that program. I get paid once you change your life and you move on. I've had over 26 people go through this program so far. They're changing their lives like never before. All Love kinds that. of things are happening in people's lives. They're launching businesses. They are uh, getting promotions in their job. They are excelling like never before. They're getting healthier, like all kinds of great things. I have one guy in there. I'll just name drop. His name is Raul Marin. And mm -hmm. this guy started the program. He was frustrated with his job. He uh, was, you know, struggling in a lot of ways, emotionally and intellectually, and just was sure. all stuck. And he did the program. He leaned in, committed 100%. He finished eight weeks, came out with a customized morning and evening routine at the other end. And now... After that happened, guess what he's doing this year? And this is just a couple, like a month after or something like that, after he finished the program. He oh, is okay. now going to write a book this year. He signed a deal to write a book. He is wow. now going to run a marathon this year from going to from little to no activity to now running a marathon. He wow. already did 
two 10 Ks while he was doing the eight week program with us. Wow. And lastly, he is launching a podcast and he's wow. like the best emotional and psychological state he's ever been in at his job. People are saying, wow. Man, you did something different. What in the world did you do? Yeah. So that's the answer. He took this program and that's just one success story. But man, I love what you said, Jose, that he leaned in. Right. Right. Uh, folks, man, like if you're, if you're picking this up, like, I, I, the energy is picking up. I feel it just in hearing you talk about it, right? But that is, that is the point. If if you're, we will try to put a link uh, to it as well when we um, publish the the episode. But it, man, if you lean in to being empowered, right? If you're trying to figure out how how to get clarity, how to be unstuck, here is a perfect program. It bookends your day, morning routine and evening routine. Obviously, you're setting your day up for success. The the end routine is where not only are you kind of um, maybe reviewing what happened that day, but you're setting up the next day and you're you're moving forward, man. Sounds like an awesome program. If you hadn't heard who he just talked about, uh, Raul, correct? Is that what the web's name was? He said that's right. Yeah, that's Raul, and that's just one uh, one man. success story. I mean, there's a whole bunch. Sure. Um, it's just very exciting because we talk about everything. You know, how do you read a book effectively? Like actually take out the 30 percent content and really engage it and apply it to your life. We talk about journaling. We talk about, um, you know, uh, affirmations, visualization, personal yeah. project time. How do you create a high income skill in your spare, non productive time that's going to yield you 10K or more? Uh, yes. We talk about, um, you know, the power of, uh, I said, journaling. We talk about commonplacing which is a three by five index card filing system, which is amazing. We talk about uh, the Bible. We talk about uh, prayer. We talk about meditation. We talk about fitness. We talk mm -hmm. about, right. We talk about um, uh, what else? Uh, breath work. I mean, uh, how to plan your night the night before in terms of, you know, your calendar for the next day, how to effectively yeah. use your calendar, all kinds of things. Very exciting stuff. Love it. Love it. And it really sounds like it really is built about building that strong foundation, right? If you have a foundation of, it, you know, I hate to go back to the three little pigs, right? In nursery school. But yeah. <laughs> if you if you have the foundation of the straw house or, you know, the wood house, it might be stable for a bit. But if you're trying to scale up, if you're trying to think big, and if you're not thinking big, then you're, if you think you're thinking big, you're not thinking big enough, right? The That's more right. you're trying to scale up, you need that strong foundation in order to hold all the greatness that you're going to get. That's amazing. Love it, man. For sure. For sure. So you one thing. That, that, uh, oh, go ahead. oh, yeah. I was going to tease it for you, man. The one thing that I actually wanted, want you to talk to people about, too, is this next leg of the Entrepreneur Bookshelf. And folks, just because I'm part of the uh, one of the founding members has nothing to do with Jose being on the podcast. <laughs> I really wanted him to be uh, on the podcast so you all could hear about him and what he's doing. But uh, yes, let's talk about one of the, the, the next leg of which I'm a founding member also. <laughs> yes, absolutely. So definitely honored to have you as a founding member of the Connected Leaders Academy. Um, you obviously bring a lot to the table. Uh, you have a lot going on. And uh, having you as part of, of, of our membership, the Academy, is exciting because not only do you bring great value to the group, but you're going to just take away a lot yourself. And what is it? So the Connected Leaders Academy is uh, essentially one of the things I pride myself in, uh, Lee, is the power of networking. So I am all about networking. I'm all about expanding my circle and meeting new people. Mm -hmm. One of the things that I do is my rule of five. John Maxwell talks about it all the time, the rule of five. Five mm -hmm. things you do every single day. It doesn't matter if it's your birthday, like mine is tomorrow. It doesn't matter if it's a <laughs> holiday. It doesn't mm -hmm. matter if you're on vacation, if you're having a bad day, if you're tired, if you're lazy, if you have COVID. It doesn't really matter. Like mm -hmm. five things you do every single day, no matter what, relentlessly, right? Okay. And yep. One of those things for me, I'll tell you my five, actually. I, I pray. Sure. I pray, I read, I journal, I budget, as in manage my finances, and I network. Mm -hmm. And that's what I've been doing for a long time. Networking has always been part of what I do. So I decided, you know what, I in the years of networking, 
I have met like so many high performers, titans of industry, movers and shakers, you know, entrepreneurs that are just doing big things. And because I go to all kinds of events, I'm from the school of thought that the greatest investment one can make is an investment in themselves, like Warren Buffett. Yes. Yes. I have invested tens of thousands of dollars in myself in terms of personal growth and personal development over the years. Mm-hmm. Um, I go to all of Grant Cardone's events, whether he's in Vegas or Miami. I've gone to Les Brown, Brendan Burchard. I have paid uh, numerous mentors one-on-one, uh, thousands of dollars to coach me, people like Ty Lopez and Richard Yu, and the list goes on. I um, love it. So I understand that you have to you know, pay to play. You got to pay to invest in yourself to grow mm-hmm. and take yourself to the next level. So I've met all of these people all around the country, you know, coast to coast, and mm-hmm. I said, you know what? A lot of these people don't know each other. So, <laughs> right. It right. was like a light bulb, right? I was like, you know, like a lot of these like high level people I know, they have their own circles, their own networks in the same mm-hmm. industry, and they rarely get out of it. So I said, you know, and if they do, it's onesies and twosies. So I said, right. how can right. I just like pull all of these people under one umbrella, under one hub, a tribe, a family, an academy mm-hmm. called the Connected Leaders Academy? So I did. Yes. I started open enrollment for uh, founding members, and founding members mm-hmm. get ten benefits to being a founding member. You also lock in a a very bare bones minimal investment to be a member. It's almost like having a few cups of coffee at Starbucks every month. Nothing significant. Um, there you go. So it's a, you don't even think about it because at the end of the day, as an entrepreneur, it's a tax write off anyway, and you're investing in yourself. <laughs> so, and I can tell you, folks, it was not even a second thought. It, yeah, I mean, you were not a, you, not a second thought at all. <laughs> you you were quick with it. You were quick with it. And and uh, the book uh, Think or Grow Rich, chapter eight, I always talk about talks about decision. Some of the mm-hmm. most successful people in the world, based on you know what Napoleon Hill put together, there is mm-hmm. they are decisive. They have the ability to make quick decisions, and they re- very seldomly go back on their decision and say that was a bad decision. They're just really good at executing, right, pulling the trigger. That's right. That's so right. you did that. You did that. You you obviously know that, right? appreciate it yeah yeah you well you pull the trigger and like you said you not only do you not look back it is all about looking forward you know right. there's right. there's no doubt it's either all in or you don't make that decision you don't pull the trigger so, correct correct absolutely. So now, now we have this connected leaders academy and in less than a, less than two weeks like a week and a half since i started open enrollment uh lee we have put in over 65 founding members Wow. Just like that. That's and yeah. And I'm talking about people that, you know, so there's a few of them that are just starting out in entrepreneurship and then they're doing sure. big things early on out the gates very quickly. Sure. And then we have people that are making multi millions of dollars at the top as well. And everybody in between that is all under the same roof and mm-hmm. things are about to explode. Things are about to get really exciting because they're going to start connecting, collaborating. And, and you might be asking, or somebody might, be, I know you know, but some people yeah. listening to this might be asking, well, why would I want to be? as an entrepreneur, a member of your membership program, right? Like Absolutely. Let, five, let them know. Let them know. <laughs> yeah, exactly. There's five main reasons why you would want to be a part of this. Number one, because you're going to grow personally and professionally. That's just a default of being around winners, right? People yeah. like this, they're going to help you grow personally and professionally. Next, yep. you're going to increase and grow your influence because the more people that you're around and the more notoriety you get, you're just naturally going to grow your influence. Um, In addition to that, you're going to scale and grow your business. You're going to get more business as a default, whether it's from the members themselves and or the big circles that they have that you don't know. Yep. And in addition to that, you're going to sharpen the ax. You're going to continue to develop your skill sets. We're all really good at just a very few things. And then we are all good and okay at more things. And then Mm -hmm. we all have a lot of things that we need to improve upon, right? So... Mm -hmm. The good news is that a lot of these people in this membership, in this academy, in this tribe, they are good at, really good at the things that you are not so good at and vice versa. Mm-hmm. So you're going to learn skill sets and improve overall across the board. And lastly, the other main reason you want to be a part of this academy is because you're going to grow your circle. You're going to grow your network. And you're, I always say you're one power connection away from changing the complete trajectory of your business. And that's all it takes. It's one person that can open the door and opportunities that are just going to start making your business explode. 
And that's really what it's all about. That's why I created the Connected Leaders Academy. It's a membership program. It's growing very quickly. And once we hit that 100 members mark, mm -hmm. um, we're going to close the doors to founding members and the price point will go up and it's going to just kind of scale from there. But the vision, Lee, this is what yes. I'm excited about. The vision is that the Connected Leaders Academy will have a thousand members by the end of the year. Wow. You know what? I love it. And I can see that happening. I can see that happening because honestly, what I will tell you is uh, after I went ahead and became part of the Connected Leaders Academy, I've made a few connections with some new people already in the last few days. And I started, it, it, like you talked about <laughs> just in the five benefits, right? Growing your influence or even in the first segment where you talked about thinking bigger, right? Right, right. I continually have started doing that now in the few connections I've made about some of my, uh, my coaching ventures, right? I started thinking, Oh, wait a minute. Now I want to connect this person with this person. Oh, now, wait a minute. They know somebody who I know can do this. Like the, the, it's that ripple effect, right? You drop the, the, the pebble in the pond and it just continues to ripple out. But what people forget is the ripples come back in and then they ripple back out again. It's the constant flow of energy, you know? Exactly. That's awesome. Well said. Oh, man. Oh, that is that is exciting stuff, man. Uh, listeners, I, I really do hope um, you are taking this away because the Entrepreneur's Bookshelf, the umbrella of, of Escobar Enterprises, has the Connected Leadership Academy, has the morning and evening routine. Uh, like folks, if, if you are looking for change, if you are, if you feeling stuck, if you don't even know where you're stuck, the point is even with the Connected Leaders Academy, right? Just by uh, association, you're going to level up. <laughs> and, and being part of networks that once you begin to level up, you don't want to stay where you are. You want to continue to level up. Hello. Man, <laughs> man, man, right? I, no, you, I, know, I, you know the deal. <laughs> <laughs> tell me if I'm wrong. Exactly. That's the whole point. And, and I'd venture to say this, right? Like, like you said about the Connectors, Connected Leaders Academy, say that fast three times. What you mentioned is there, everyone in this is good at a few things. And we all have our own networks. We know what we're doing, but it's it's being able to connect with someone because being, being intelligent enough to know where your um, weaknesses are, right? Where you need to improve. That's what helps you level up faster and scale up to, to, to heights that you didn't even know you could. So, uh, man, Jose, wonderful stuff man i i'm not only just happy to be part of it but i love hearing you talk about it because that vision that passion man it comes through it comes through <clears throat> excuse me so i, I want to um give our listeners a little tidbit here uh jose and i were talking the other day before we uh, came up with the date to go ahead and get our podcast episode in but it's funny because Again, you talk about networking and being around leaders and, and movers and shakers. A lot of times it is hard for me to hear the accolades or hear how people feel about what I'm doing and the impact that I'm trying to make. I appreciate it more than 100%. And it's humbling. And I'm honored that people feel that way. Well, folks, what I want to tell you is, I felt that way about Jose when we were in our mastermind group together from like the very first uh, one or two meetings. Like I was like, man, that guy, whatever it is that he has, I want to be part of it, <laughs> you know? So, man, I, I'm so honored and, and happy that we connected in the mastermind group and I'm more than happy to have had you on the, the spotlight series, man. Um, yeah, Up, upwards and onwards to bigger, better things for impact, for sure. Um, 
yeah. So, so Jose, in in closing, man, what is one one thought or one kind of takeaway that you want to leave our listeners with? Um. Well, one thing is for sure. Mm-hmm. You sh- everybody should have a one word for the year. There's mm-hmm. a, there's a great book called uh, exactly that one word, right? Mm-hmm. And, uh, I believe it's by three gentlemen by the name of John Gordon, Dan Britton, and Jimmy Page. It's called One Word. Okay. And the one word is very simple. You just create one word that's going to define that year for you. And the one word that I used in 2021 was the word execute. Because wow. I was tired and just sick and tired of being sick and tired of saying, you know what, I'm going to do this. How many times do we all aim, 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 and never fire the, tr- the trigger, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's ready, aim, fire. So I realized that, you know what, in 2021, I'm going to pick a word for the year, and that word was execute. And I said, I will execute on this morning and evening routine program if that is the last thing I do in 2021. Because just so you know, Lee, I was working on that thing for a year. So oh, wow. No. <laughs> Just know that complete mastery of what I'm, what I have in me is all in that. I, I dumped everything I had into it because nice. I was thinking about perfection versus progress, right? Uh, yeah, yeah, that that's one of those things that does trip us up. Absolutely. Yes, and we all know well done is better than well said, right? So I <laughs> said, you know what? I'm going to get this thing done and release this program and get it done. And sure enough, when I finally said enough is enough and I decided to pull the trigger mm-hmm. in my first 30 days, Lee, of launching that program, I made 20K in the first 30 days. Love it. And the reason why I even mentioned that is because how many of us or anyone listening to this podcast are Mm -hmm. thinking about thinking about doing something and just not pulling the trigger? And as soon as you decide to pull that trigger, your entire life can change. And that 20K has more than doubled and is tripling now because of the simple fact that I pulled the trigger on that word. And I said, you know what, in 2022, I'm going to have a new word of the year. Yes. What's the new word of the year? Yeah. For this year. Go ahead. Go ahead. Is is monetize. Because (sighs) I said, you know what, I'm going to take this, what I've learned and what Mm -hmm. I've been doing and what I realize can happen when you execute Instead of, you know, words, I'm going to take action and not just action, massive action. So I said, once I take massive action and I need to do something now bigger and think bigger, because I thought I was thinking big with the program. And trust me, that's going to take (laughs) off and that's going to be amazing. But the reality is I said, I'm not thinking big enough. So I said, let me monetize. Let me create something that's going to create even more impact. And at the same time, is going to feed the family like never before. And boom, along came the Connected Leaders Academy. And my mm-hmm. friend, Lee, this is just the beginning. So my, my, my encouragement to everybody out there who's listening to this, if you take anything at all from today's podcast, my encouragement to you is this. Execute. Create a morning and evening routine that works for your lifestyle. Create good habits. Create discipline in your life. Create this mental toughness, the mental calluses Say enough is enough and make this a year that you're going to look back upon and say, this has completely changed my entire life. And that begins now, not tomorrow, not in the future. Now. That's my mm. Mm. Man, uh, love it. I, I could not have said that any better. Uh, Jose, brother, man, I, I, I truly appreciate you being on the Spotlight series and I will put this out there. This is not the first time. Okay. Or I'm sorry. This is the first time. This will not be the only time. <laughs> no, I appreciate we you. Will, we will definitely have you back on because we'll want to, you know, hear updates on not just the Connected Leaders Academy. We are want to get an update on the morning and evening routine program. We were definitely going to have you back on the Spotlight Series, man. And uh, folks, you heard it have your get your get your one word and go ahead and pull the trigger stop waiting get it done it's that simple the you know jose i even tell people sometimes you have to do it afraid right oh yeah if if we're talking thinking big and thinking way big 
that can be scary. It could be, it could leave you in, in fear. It can leave you with uh, anxiety. You know what? Do it with the anxiety. Do it with the fear. Do it afraid because you will be so glad that you did. That's amazing. Can I, can I say something really quickly? I, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, Please uh, do. Just so anybody knows that's listening to this, uh, I offer a free strategy session. So I am more than happy to sit down with anyone who wants to help, who wants to evaluate their current morning and evening routine, who wants to even entertain the idea of being in the Connected Leaders Academy, if that's something, if you're an entrepreneur, um, you know, so either one of those two ideas or both, if there is uh, an inkling in you that says, you know what, I, I, I kind of want to know more, but I'm not sure, or I, you know what, I need to know more and I want to do something about it, whatever, wherever you fall, I offer free strategy sessions where we'll look at, we'll sit down for 30 minutes. I'll give you my time. Uh, whether we do business or not is, is neither here nor there because regardless, you're going to get value. And uh, mm -hmm. I'm going to give you value uh, no matter what. I'm going to look at your current systems, your current frameworks. What do they look like? Where can we improve? Where can we tweak? And, uh, and if it makes sense and we have chemistry and, and it sounds like it's a good fit and we can work together, wonderful. And if not, hey, we're still friends and uh, at least you walk away with value. So I'm going to throw that out there. Love it, man. Absolutely. And when we publish this, publish this episode, man, can't speak. Um, I'll go ahead and make sure that, uh, folks, we will put Jose's information there. And if you don't want to get in touch with him, if you want to get in touch with me, I will get you in touch with Jose as well. Absolutely. Uh, folks, this has been another episode of the Spotlight Series. We thank you for your time and listening to Jose Escobar and all the things that he is providing under Escobar Enterprises with the uh, Entrepreneur's Bookshelf, the Connected Leaders Academy, and the Morning and Evening Routine Program. Uh, you can find the Spotlight Series under the Live All Good podcast. It's on uh Apple, it's on Google, it's on Spotify, also on Amazon, and uh, a few other uh, podcast platforms that you find your favorite podcasts on. Until next time, this is the Spotlight Series under the Live All Good Podcast.